So why did Detroit Moped Works go electric? They're using 1978 moped technology on a modern 50 mile per hour non-approved motorcycle. Cool for me, cool for you as a user, cool looking, right? But is it correct? That's coming right up. Hey everyone, welcome to Run Playback, where we help you with video and tech tips to lead a more efficient and affordable lifestyle. Let's be creative and save money at the same time. In this video, we'll be visiting Detroit Moped Works, North America's largest brick and mortar vintage moped shop. We'll talk about their history, why they embrace e-bike culture, and take a tour of their facility. Wanna know if moped and e-bike culture can coexist? Stick around to find out. So we're here on Michigan Avenue in Southwest Detroit. Today we'll be talking with Alex Samuel, a moped enthusiast and owner of Detroit Moped Works, one of the largest and most respected vintage moped shops in North America. So let's get to it. So my name is Alex Samuel, and uh, I own Detroit Moped Works here. Uh, we started off as a vintage moped shop. So as people were coming to us and looking for vehicles to ride, we kind of expanded into the electric bikes, which actually I suppose are technically moped by definition because they do have the electric motor plus the pedal. I was into the hobby, and part of the hobby is, is the DIY thing a lot. Like they need love, they need help um, to make them go faster. Uh, we had a clubhouse, which I owned. My buddy Ted was in the club repairing mopeds for people at the time. And so we got to talking and it was like, okay, well, how about I get the parts, you do the labor, we build bikes and sell them, and we'll split the money. And then Ted actually had the opportunity to open up Metropolis Bicycles two miles down the road. But when he left, I kind of had to make the choice if I was gonna give this up or quit my office job to come here full time, so I did. The city was made for two million people. Right now, the population I think is like 700,000 or something. It's relatively small. So you have these big, huge, open expanses of road, which gives you a lot of like freedom to ride. Maybe you're prepared to go down Michigan Avenue here, where its speeds are 35 to 50, depending what traffic's doing. But there's always gonna be a next road over. So like Buchanan's the next road over, four lanes, no traffic, just great for riding. You know, Woodward's a big road that maybe isn't good for your two-wheel toy, but John R is just over one direction. Uh, Rosa Parks is just over the other direction and those are roads that are like I mean Rosa Parks is one way you can just go and go and go unobstructed you know Motor City we don't have good public transportation it's just uh, just not a thing that we have if you don't want to have a car two-wheeled vehicles are good for that <laughs> toy motorcycles, when they were new 40 years ago, they came with a toolkit and they were like, here kid, you're a mechanic. And now they've had 40 years of bad mechanics, bad storage, bad riding, right? So like actually using the vintage mopeds is kind of an uphill battle, but that does make for a great experience. Pre-pandemic, I think our biggest rally, we had 300 people on vintage mopeds riding through the city, you know, and that's cool and impressive and like you make a bunch of noise, you make a bunch of smoke, you look interesting and then you're showing the city to people. It's funny that Michigan is actually the home to the vintage moped culture, the whole thing. Kalamazoo, Michigan is where Moped Army started. You know, all the different people branched out across the country and started moped clubs, which means that like Michigan is really heavy with them. And um, for whatever weird reason, Ohio, they have laws that really require pedals and have special rules. So everybody in Ohio bought mopeds when they were 15, like up until recently. So Michigan has just been pulling mopeds out of Ohio for years and years and years. And it just seems like they just keep coming. It's crazy. Obviously, like you don't have to buy gas. That's nice about an e-bike. I mean, aesthetically, you got the differences. For me, when I think of the differences, it's more like a usability sort of a thing. We've been selling these Detroit Bikes e Sparrows for three years now. I've switched two battery fuses out. The Mondays are the finest e-bikes that we've seen. Every single one came in great. None of them have any problems. None of them get damaged. They're good with the warranty. They're good with responding to emails. Um, Chuck, my rep, calls me constantly. Super lightweight, um, which makes them good for loading them up into your car, for us moving them around the shop, for customers taking them on test rides. Good lower center of gravity on them, which some people come in here as a customer and they, they're thinking bicycles, so they want to be up in the air. But again, for you, 
you're gonna be safer, you know, in your cornering, in your turning, in your handling when you lower your center of gravity. For like last mile transport or for just like a fun weekend or getting around town, they're great and they just work. If you try to use your vintage moped like that, you can't. Like, if you've let it sit for a couple weeks, you're gonna have to clean your carb, you're gonna have to like tickle your choke, you're gonna have to like swap a spark plug. You know, if you've taken it on a long ride, something's gonna vibrate loose. Are you trying to sign up for a, for a hobby and a culture? Get a vintage moped. If you just wanna use something, get an e-bike, cause they just simply work. honest like I'm not trying to avoid the warranties that come on these things for the people because I think everything that we sell has got a two-year parts warranty right so I'm not trying to goof that up for anybody by suggesting that they modify them I mean again once you get through your two years might as well treat it like a vintage moped and try to get the more speed out of it but just like a vintage moped when you put the bigger carb and bigger cylinder and you work your motor harder like your motor's not gonna last as long your gas isn't gonna last as long right like you're gonna chew it up that's just part of it I hope I assume that, that we do get there after people see through their warranties we can start experimenting, but um, currently we're just suggesting people use them as they were engineered. I know that they're expensive to make and I know that like when they're taking on investors, those investors want to make a bunch of money, which I guess makes them expensive to make, right? So I get that and I think a lot of them don't want to have a retail store. They want to be, I guess, shielded from some of that risk but if there is ever a desire for stores to sell them the vehicles need to I mean they need to meet those standards as a brick and mortar I have to care about the customers um, I have to make sure they're comfortable riding it I have to be able to service them for the life of the bike that is a good thing about the Onyx and the Huck is that they're basically on uh, the original Mondays as well they're all built off of Pook Magnum and when they first started they were actually using like the Italian um, EBR Pook Magnum forks. They're actually using the motion left American made Pook Magnum swing arms. They're actually using the Peugeot Pook reproduction wheels. They're definitely using like, you know, the Pook aftermarket handlebars. They're using controls from Magura, which is what you'll find on all these 1970s mopeds. If someone does come in here, the shocks that are on my wall fit on your Onyx or your Huck or whatever. For us, they're serviceable, but also in that regard, they're using like Repop 1978 moped technology on a modern 50 mile per hour like non-approved motorcycle. Like I don't I don't know that that's the right thing to do. It's cool for me, you know, cool for you as a user, cool looking, right? But is it correct to be using Repop of 1970s technology on a six thousand dollar vehicle? I, um. One debt to society later. <laughs> love to find a person who's as excited about electric vehicles, uh, whether it's e-bikes or all electric vehicles, as we are about vintage mopeds, who knows the culture, who knows the community, who can come in here with this big level of excitement. You know, e-bikes can only get better. You know, these companies can only get better. The products can only get better. But young people generally like get it and they think it's smart and logical, and, you know, and they're not anti e-bike. But then you do get some of the older folks, people that had the two stroke mopeds when they were, you know, 14 to 18 back in 1978 to 1985. Those folks are less excited that we're, uh, that we're doing these things, right? It's not uncommon for people to come in and actually test ride all the shapes of e-bikes and then leave with a scooter or to come in here dead set on getting a scooter and to leave with a Monday, right? Like people don't really know what they want until they come here. So hopefully as a brick and mortar with so many options here, we can provide that for the people. As one of the few brick and mortar shops in Detroit that survived the pandemic, floods, and everything in between, Detroit Moped Works has shown that they're quick to adapt to the rapidly evolving e-bike industry. Big shout out to Alex and the entire team at Detroit Moped Works for supporting the vintage moped community while also opening their doors to the future e-bike community. If you want to dive into more video and tech tips, click the links on the side and remember to like and subscribe so we can help you find tech deals that fit your lifestyle. We'll see you guys in the next video.